there's a lot written about the millennial generation and how good or bad it is, depending on who you're talking to, right? Death of expertise, bad. Kids these days, good, because like we're dealing with all the crap that the boomers gave us, stupid boomers. Um, but iGen is about the next one. That's what we're going to talk about today. The book iGen by, I'm going to look this up, Jean M. Twenge. Huh, so let's do that. One of the first points that Twenge makes in her book iGen is that the uh, like the trends or the things that iGen is doing is neither good nor bad. It just is what it is. And the, kind of one of the overall trends is that everything's moving later. So they are, you know, reaching adult maturity, in air quotes, later than uh, other than other generations. And that's in part, in part, in large part, because they're never allowed to go outside and because they're coddled a lot because that's what the parents are. They helicopter and and instead of having big families where you're just trying to survive, they have small families and they're like trying to make sure they give them the absolute best and they'll fight tooth and nail to make sure they get the absolute best. You actually see some of that in uh, kids these days talking about how they like to get into college, you have to like start up preschool and be in the best prep preschool so that you can get into the right college. Um, and kids these days says that's stupid. And yeah, that's like basically you stuck us with this. Thanks a lot. We're the best trained generation. And then than any other before we get treated the worst as the most junior. So that sucks according to kids these days. Now, Twenge breaks this book up into 10 uh, chapters around 10 trends. I simplified them here because I don't know. I think a lot of them are like, here's the trend and here's the outcome of the trend, which she kind of counts as another trend, which is fine. I, I just didn't think there was fully 10. So let's talk about the trends that I see. The first one is slowed growth and maturity. And let's grab a quote from the book. Contrary to the prevalent idea that children are growing up faster than previous generations did, i generers are growing up more slowly. 18-year-olds now act like 15-year-olds used to, and 13-year-olds like 10-year-olds. Teens are physically safer than ever, yet more mentally vulnerable. <clears throat> so the mentally vulnerable part is mimicked in uh, You Are Awesome by Neil Paps Risha, where he calls it porcelain dolls. And that we're just porcelain dolls, and as soon as any failure comes, then we have trouble. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so he says that because, uh, because we've basically always been given... Um, participation badges, you know, you showed up, great, you're awesome. Then as soon as we hit real failure, we have trouble. And that would actually even go with range. Range ties into that as well. I'll link a bunch of these book reviews in the show notes, uh, whether it's a video or a, uh, it'll be a video, there'll be a card up above, or a link to the post if there's, if I didn't do a video on it, because I haven't done videos on every book that I've done. Um, yeah, in range, they talk about people that didn't hit this like path to early success. They had more failure up front, so they are better equipped to deal with failure now. Unlike the, again, porcelain dolls, use Neil Pashrisha's, um his term, uh, unlike them, because they never saw failure, because they just hit success, 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 and that's what they were expected to, and then they hit some failure later in life, and then it just all destroys their world, because they're just supposed to be the success people. One of the second trends that I kind of saw in this is more screen time, less connection. Uh, and you saw this in kids these days as well, where they talked about, like, kids basically aren't allowed outside anymore, and even if you do let your kid outside to go do stuff without a parent supervising you, then you're like the only parent and other parents are like calling and shaming you. Uh, I've actually was just reading in, uh, it's on Kindle, but it's my Kindle in free range kids. Very similar. Like, Hey, you let your kid walk down to the store. That's terrible. I can't believe that. Um, we have let our daughter walk down to the coffee shop a block away when I'm working there and have other parents say, that's crazy. And I'm like, you can literally see the building from here. Like my wife could stand on the deck and watch her the entire time until she walks in the door. She's probably five feet. You can't see her between where you can't see her and the door. But we've been told by parents that that is a bad thing. And so kids are connecting on screen time because they're not allowed out. Again, you see this in kids these days, see this in iGen as well. And so they're just not connecting at a deep emotional level. Um, and if you want more on that, digital uh, minimalism talks about the low bandwidth that digital connection has because you can't read emotions. You can't get feedback. When you bully someone, you don't get that instant feedback that you do uh, in in real life because you see their face immediately and you feel it because that's what we are. We read faces, we feel things. One of the other things that she highlights is that iGen reads way less, read way less books than other generations and they have shorter attention spans. Now she takes it and she actually jumps to this later as one of her recommendations, but she takes it and says, hey, we need to like design courses for them then. Um, and this is where Death of Expertise would say, no, they need to, to get with the program and start being able to focus. They need to learn these habits because they will need them later. Truth is probably somewhere in the middle, like long focused concentration is a good thing for any job, really. Like when I'm programming, which is my main income, long focused concentration helps me like wrap my mind around a problem and solve it well. Um, when I'm reading, it lets me wrap my head around a book and, you know, accomplish reading a book well. 
when I was doing design, when I'm writing, all these things, like basically everything I do, long focused bits of concentration, help me do the job well, help me get into it well, make the best progress, all those things. So really, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, but we need more of it. And if you want that, Digital Minimalism is a great book that goes over that more. Again, link down below because I did, don't think I did a video on that one at all. So one of the outcomes of all this screen time is that basically the more screen time you have, the less happy you are, the more depressed you are, the more time you spend on social media, the less happy you are, the less empathetic you are, like all these things. Screen time is bad, really, is what it says, especially for teens, especially for like middle schoolers through teens. Like it's bad. Don't, don't let your kids have screens. Another one of the outgrowths of the screen time is that iGen is very surface empathetic, we'll say. So they're quite happy to change their avatar on whatever social media platform, make a post about something, but they are not getting into health things. They're not donating, no, they're not donating, and they're not like using their own time to get out and, you know, whatever, serve meals to the homeless, we'll say, or anything like that. They're like, oh no, it's good, we should be helping, but somebody else should be actually doing the work. I am going to change my social media avatar and post about it, or do the water bucket challenge or something like that. And while the Water Bucket Challenge did like do a really big increase in donations for, I don't remember what it was right now, but for that, see below, <laughs> um, the it was like a one-time thing that did not come back the next year. They right their donations went back the next year. There was a one-time thing. That's good. It was a like and it was like a sizable increase, but it was not like they didn't get more people coming out to help long term with it. It was like people gave some money and they walked away. And iGen is not even doing that, it seems, uh, based on the surveys that she's looking at. So another thing that is where religious groups may have brought this community in the past, right? You go to youth groups, something like that. iGen is, if they're in a spiritual household, religious household at all, which is unlikely, they are less likely to say they are even spiritual as opposed to religious, right? They don't believe that there's some higher power. Um, and in large part, that's because they would say, we'll say the Christian community especially defines itself by what it's against, right? And iGen is very open. They are more likely to have same-sex partners because they just love someone and they do what you do when you love someone, regardless of gender in, in many instances. So experimentation and is totally cool with them and just being free to be you is totally cool with them, um, which is another reason they just don't like, we'll say Christian, she is Christian, but religious circles because they are defined what they're, by what they're against more often than what they are for. Another big trend is more mental health issues. Let's grab a quote. iGeners look happy online, make goofy faces on Snapchat and smiling in their pictures on Instagram, but dig deeper and reality is not so comforting. iGen is on the verge of the most severe mental health crisis for young people in decades. I have been in discussion with a number of colleges actually, because I know people there, I'm on the board at one, um, about the, the continual need for more mental health facilities at call and like exponential growth every year almost right now as we get end millennial and beginning iGen because iGen would be just going in to college right now in the last year or two I believe so she said uh, iGen is the term she used it's not actually like fully defined yet um, that I could find but it's I think she said it's like about 2001 to 2018 basically the first generation that hit middle school and when you could have a phone with you and that was like normal so Again, going back to Neil Pasricha, we're building porcelain dolls when we coddle them, when we make sure they don't have failures, when they have, when we don't, you know, get them to do stuff on their own. And that's not a good thing. And then specifically for girls in social media, they're kind of damned if they do, damned if they don't, right? If they're not on social media, they miss out. If they post a sexy picture, they're slut shamed. Another big trend is insecurity, specifically on the career front, which you actually saw in kids these days as well a lot. Um, while previous generations wanted to enjoy the jobs, iGen just helps to have a job that they don't hate and that they can stick with because they are very insecure about the world that they've been left with in their terms and what, how they're even going to do it. They feel like they have to run twice as hard to get half as much as previous generations because they're coming out as the most trained generation and like getting stuck, you know, being, um, getting stuck at low junior positions for far longer than anyone else would have in the past. Right. And they have to do twice as much training and have way more school debt to even get this junior level position that sometimes may not even pay. I just saw a reverse internship where I was supposed to pay you to work for you $15 an hour for me to work there, which seemed dumb. And I, you know, I would clearly say no, but I'm not iGen. So that's kind of what they're faced with on many levels. Now on the family front with security, iGen wants kids. They want to have a family, um, but they just don't even know how they'd even possibly afford it. So they are having a tough time even getting there. Another thing around family uh, is that they often think that everyone around them wants a hookup, just like hookup, you know, casual sex culture, um, and they're the only ones that want a relationship. 
but basically everyone thinks that, so they all want a relationship. They're just, you know, too too afraid or too whatever is portrayed culturally to them makes it seem like that's not what everyone else wants. So they're just stuck on their own wanting a relationship. And there's a few other connections in here. One thing what Twenge highlighted was safe spaces. And the again, she's not calling it good or bad, but that they're more prevalent now and that they're more prevalent. Now Tom Nichols in Death of Expertise, which I talked about already, uh, says that they're bad. And so she, but she posits that the reason they are more concerned about safe spaces than censorship, because safe spaces are censorship, is that they have never seen the damaging effects of censorship, but they have lived the damaging effects of words, of bullying, of this 24-7 cyberbullying you can't get away from because they can always message you and they can just keep going even when, like, before you could leave school, now you can't, you, you, you can't, or you can't leave school, but bullying is going to follow you online. Anyways. So that's what she posits, why safe spaces are bigger, why they're more important to iGen, to this next generation, and why uh, us old folks say it's terrible. Because we know, and I don't even know, like I was born in 1980. I Censorship, I didn't see much of it. I wasn't old enough to see a lot of it. But the that we are more concerned about censorship as a bad thing and more willing to let controversial ideas go because we'd rather, because we see that censorship is a bigger problem than the opposite. Another point that Twenge makes is that iGen watches less news than other generations, and one, she just totally misses the point that's made really well in Death of Expertise, that news is basically uh, all about eyeballs now. It's not all about uh, anything else. It's just about entertainment. She misses that point. Like, here's a good reason why they might not watch news, because it's actually less valuable than it used to be. It's all about just the bad things, and it's just about trying to get you, you know, scared about things. It actually says that again. Free Range Kids. This is the Kindle, but in Free Range Kids, it was just saying that too in one of the chapters. And I'll review Free Range Kids uh, in a few weeks. But that was another thing they said, like, news, she missed. Like, news is sensational. It's just designed to get eyeballs. It's designed to sell advertising. It is different than it was for previous generations. So, of course, it's less valuable. Why would they even bother watching news? So the takeaways from iGen. First one is give your kid a phone as late as possible. Like, don't let them engage in any social media as long as possible. If we uh, tie it in with free range a little bit, free range kids, then like just let them go do stuff, keep them off their phones, <laughs> let them go out and like walk to the store without a cell phone, and figure it out, right? Go drop them off at the pool and let them figure out how to get home because they can do these things. You just need to let them. Another thing that is important to kind of tie it in with the screen time is encourage your kids to have uh, face to face time with their friends with no adults present, right? A lot of the, this highlighted a lot of the outings that kids were taking, teenagers, teenagers even, 16, 17 year olds were taking was that, oh, I went to the mall with my family and we walked behind the family and we talked while, well, you know, 10 feet back, but our parents were with us the whole time. And our parents went into the stores we wanted to go into too. Like, I used to ride my bike to the mall at like 12 and just go do what I wanted and ride my bike all over town and, like my brother, my five-year-old brother would come, a six, 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 seven-year-old brother would come with us into the forest and just play. We weren't watching him. He was just doing what he wanted. Like he was playing with the big kids. So that's more what I want to see my kids do. Another thing that would highlight it here uh, and would be highlighted in Death of Expertise as something we need to do is we need to teach kids better, teach kids how to be able to vet resources better so that they can say, no, this resource is not a valid resource. This resource is bad. This resource will not is not good, is not something that I want to see. They do not have standing to like, you know, speak into this topic because they're just bad. If you're working with iGen, because they're the next generation coming in, um, they're gonna need more instruction. They wanna work hard though. They want to find a job that they can stick at, that they can have a path up for, and that they can really do well at, that they wanna stay with, but they're gonna need some more help. And you can say that's bad, but they've always had more help. Like this is what they've learned, that people will help them, people will invest in them. Uh, a really good book on that is, uh, what is it called again? The Coaching Habit. Uh, which I read and did a written review of a long time ago, but I will link that written review below so that you can read it if you want to. Uh, it's a really good model for how to coach your staff and how to input with them so that they know that you're there and that you're supporting them. Well, my final question is always, should you read iGen by Gene M. Twenge? And I would say, yeah, probably. Like, it was a good book. It was very heavily research-backed, which is good. I, I like that. I come actually from a counseling background. I have a counseling degree. Um, so she went over four surveys that have sampled like over generations and showed the change in like beliefs in this. That's really good. And I enjoyed it. I think that you should read the book. And it wasn't, it wasn't too weighty either. While it was research backed, it wasn't like, you know, reading a paper, which papers can be really boring. <laughs> they can be tough to read, but it was a good, well-written book that showed the trends. And when she said, Hey, other people posited, you know, 
something else besides, a, you know, she took a lot to screens, but something else besides a phone did this. And she's like, here's five other studies that basically debunk that idea that this ties so closely to the rise in screen time, the rise in phone access for kids that it, can you really have another option? So I really liked it on that point, And I think you should read it. Like if you're going to read more about this, like that iGen should be on your list. Um, death of expertise should be on your list. Kids these days should be on your list. Digital minimalism should be on your list. Like those are four solid books to look at how digital life is affecting us and how, uh, yeah, it's how it's affecting us. Cause you can see it in all four of them. They just all take it at a different angle. Really. Thanks for watching. If you like this, I generally have book videos on Fridays and uh, yeah, and it'll be reviews and other stuff, uh, until I get so many in the bank. Cause I've already got a bunch in the bank that I just have to start putting them out other days. You can subscribe below and don't hit the bell because you got better things to do than hit the bell and wait for a notification. You should like schedule YouTube time and watch me then. Otherwise, go read, go do something else. Uh, yeah, and give me a thumbs up though. That would be nice.